One of the fun, more creative things that you can make using the auto-align technology that I've been showing you in this chapter is a montage of images. Each image retains a somewhat separate quality, but it is a composite and it's one that you can tweak to suit your own creativity. I'm starting here in Bridge, as I've been doing throughout this chapter, where I'm going to select these five images of the flat irons in the Rocky Mountains where I live. I'm going to click on the first image, hold the shift key and click on the last, and then I'll go up to the tools menu, to Photoshop, and I'll choose load files into Photoshop layers. In this new document in Photoshop, I now have five layers, each with one of those photographs on it. I'll select all five layers, holding the shift key and clicking on the bottom layer. And then, as I've been doing throughout the chapter, I'll go to the Edit menu, and I'm going to choose Auto-Align Layers. In the Auto-Align Layers dialog box, I'm going to do something different this time. Instead of the Auto Projection method, I'm going to choose the Collage Projection method, and I'll leave the Lens Correction features unchecked, and I'll click OK. Photoshop has expanded the canvas so that it's big enough to fit five separate images. I'm actually going to make the canvas a bit bigger so I can spread these out and maybe rotate them. To increase the canvas size, I'll go up to the image menu at the top of the screen and I'll choose canvas size. I'll make sure that relative is checkmarked so that I'm adding inches relative to those that are already there. And I'm going to type 0.5 inches in the width field and in the height field. It's just a guess but it should give me enough space to work. I'll click OK, and I did get a little more space around my images. Now I'm going to add a background layer and fill that with white, just so I don't have to look at these transparent pixels. So in the Layers panel, I'm going to click off of all these layers and just onto one of them. I'll go down to the Add New Layer icon at the bottom of the Layers panel and click it. That adds Layer 1. I'll click on Layer 1 and drag it to the bottom of the layer stack. With Layer 1 selected, I'm going to fill with white. Notice that white is my background color. If yours isn't, you can press D on your keyboard and that will set the background color to white. To fill with the background color, I usually use a shortcut rather than going up to the edit menu and down to the fill dialog box. That shortcut is Command plus Delete on the Mac or Control plus Backspace on the PC. And that did fill the selected layer one with white giving me a background for my images. Now I'm going to add a layer style to each image, in particular a drop shadow and a stroke around each image so that each image looks like a separate photo. I'll start with the Flatirons 93 image, selecting that layer in the Layers panel. Then I'll go down to the bottom of the Layers panel to the FX icon. I'll click there and I'm going to choose Stroke. That opens the Layer Style dialog box. I'll click on its title bar and move it over so you can see more of the image. Here I have Stroke checked and selected. The check mark means that I'm applying the stroke effect to the flat irons layer. The fact that it's highlighted means that I can see the options for the stroke effect over here in the center of the layer style dialog box. I'm going to change a couple of those. First, I want the stroke to be white, not black. So I'll click in the color field here and I'll use the slider in the middle to drag up to white and then I'll click OK and that's changed the stroke around this image to white. Then I'm going to go to the position field and I'm going to position the stroke inside of the image rather than outside and that way I'll get sharp corners on the stroke rather than the rounded corners that you see here. I'm also going to make the stroke a little bigger so that it looks like a photo frame. I'll make it maybe five pixels wide. Next I'm going to add another layer effect, a drop shadow, to this layer. To do that I'll move to the Styles column, I'll put a check mark next to Drop Shadow, and to see the Drop Shadow options I'll select Drop Shadow. Over here in the center column I'm going to make some changes. I want to change the angle of this shadow so that it's on the other side of the photo. So I'll click in this wheel and drag around to the other side, keeping my eye on the shadow here in the image. If I want to I can just click and drag directly in the image to position the shadow. Then I'll tweak some of the other settings here to taste, and you can do the same. There is no right or wrong answer. I might move the distance slider, the spread slider, the size slider. I think I'm also going to reduce the opacity of this shadow so that it's not as intense. And then I'll click OK. Now I can see the effects that I added to the Flatirons 93 layer. 
I'm going to copy those very same effects to each of the other layers. To do that, I'll hold down the Option key on my keyboard, that's the Alt key on the PC, and I'll click where it says Effects under Flatirons 93, and drag down to Flatirons 94, and release my mouse. And that copied all the effects to that layer as well, and you can see them here on this other photograph in the montage that I'm building. I'll do the same to each of the other layers, holding down the Option or Alt key, and dragging the effects down to each layer. Now there are other things I could do as well. I can move these layers around. I can rotate them. I can add a warp so it looks like the edge of a photo is curling. Let's try some of those things. First of all, I'm going to warp the Flatirons 93 layer. That layer is selected in the Layers panel. I'm going to go up to the Edit menu and down to Transform, and I'm going to choose Warp. That brings up this bounding box. I'm going to click the bottom right corner of the bounding box and just drag in a little, making it look like that corner is up off the page. And then I'll go up to the options bar for the warp command and I'll click the check mark to commit this transform. I also could rotate this or any one of the images. I'll click on another one of the layers here and then I'll go back to the edit menu. I'll choose free transform this time. And then I see this bounding box around the second photo. I'm going to move my mouse over one of the corners and when I see this double pointed curved arrow, I know that when I click and drag, I'll be rotating the image. So I'll do something like that. If I click inside of the image, I can move it. Maybe I'll move it up here so we can see the flat irons. And then I'll click the check mark here to commit those changes. And I would just go through the layers, moving and rotating and warping until I had a montage that I really liked. So I'm going to continue to do that as I sign off on this lesson. And you can be working on your copy of the montage as well.